Hi there and welcome to Sells Hoop Heads. Great to have your company as always. So much to talk about in the show this week. Hiram Harris, special guest, NBA Finals going off. And of course, round eight results, round nine preview in the Sells NBL. And to do it, to share it with us, New Zealand's version of the Step Brothers. Here they are. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> so much room for activities, Justin. <laughs> Look at all the room for the activities. Let's do it. We're going to go build a bunk bed. You have Thursday. the voice of Jesus and Fergie. <laughs> Who? It's another Step Brothers reference. I've got to tell you, one of the things that I'm enjoying other than you two this season hairstyles in the cells NBL. There it is. Can we go, can we have a look at today? Can we go back in time? Yeah. And can we just appreciate what we have right here in the cells NBL? What about this guy, Brody Perry? I know, a lot of uh, a lot of chat about Brody Perry's beautiful mullet. That is a real mu mullet. That's Stunning. legit. Because it's straight, whereas like this mullet here is nice, but it's got volume at the back. That's a, that's a good look from Walter. I like the, Walter. Walter. I like I like the, the curls, curls from Walter. Does he get it permed or is it just natural? Charlie Dalton. See, that's the modern, that's the modern one. Liam Judd. That's a, that's a good He's one. a specimen all over, not just Starting to grow it out. Well, there it is. But I mean, that's, that's number one. one. That's number one. one. Look at that. Those are movie star good looks. <laughs> that is definition of business in the front and party in the back. Oh, man. <laughs> look at that party. Fades. Oh, let's go back in oh, time. Hill. Solid, Damn. solid, dude. Dutchie? Got John Rodemaker. Shout out to John, who's been fighting prostate cancer and just had his last treatment. Yes, good. Look at the look here. Fight that. Good fight. Oh, hang on. Here's where it gets real. Yeah, that is absolutely footballer esque. <laughs> that is Argentina, 1999. Yeah, I did. I BJ. did steal that from BJ? school. Yeah. <laughs> I like BJ with his semi sideshow Bob days. Lots of work for that. Don't be mad at me, Beach. Dave Langrell. Yeah, love that. Top right. knot as well with a headband. Look at that look. Respect. Oh, Top knot well with that. Oh, look, it's Jamie Hello. Tart from Ted <laughs> Lasso. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you got a discount on the frosted tips. I love that. Miles, oh, Miles Pierce. Pierce. Nice. Back before it was That's, great. And he's got the braids Straight there. Corn right. Straight cornrows are quality. Mm -hmm. Kenshi? We got yeah. A little, little long-haired Kenshi. Yeah, he went with the headband for a bit. Shout out to Lindsay Tate. Oh, hang on. This, uh, now, this is my all-time favorite see that, photo right here. Look at the inspiration for yeah. the next generation. And Jared Kenny had not only length, but also he had volume. Volume. It was beautiful. And he's got it shaped high up. And, uh, oh, Dom Kalman popped on with, the, the with a little bit of the, the, the twist at the front. This the master of color. Flower power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got, oh, Flame oh, last, last week. week. This is most recent. That? This yeah. is what he, he called us out, said it was going to be quality. I always appreciate DKP. Yeah, because he changes it up. And also, what's the hair budget there? I mean, there's styling budget. There's got to be something in the contract. Maybe that's what got him over the line to come back and play for the Bulls. Yeah, just to inspire it somewhere somewhere in Pukekohe getting his hair done. I hope well, so. we love it. I mean, keep it up to all of our players out there. Just, we, we love it. Keep going. Plenty to talk about right here on Sells Hoop Heads. And of course, we get into the results of round eight. There they are. Rams, winners, Hall. Hawks in a thriller, Saints over the Rams, Hawks on the double, Tuatata in a high-scoring clash against the Jets, and the Bulls strangled the Giants. Ears and Rams, I don't think anyone didn't expect What's that. the next game? I, I tipped the ears, by the way, <laughs> silly me. Um, Anthony Hilliard, is he is he the same player we saw it's last not, season? It, it's not the same team, because there's no Ty yet. there's no Javante Douglas, mm -hmm. and one of those guys needs to come back and help him out. Somebody, somebody has to create some space other than him. Everybody's yeah. so concentrated on him right now. It's they, they need to do something to find him a little bit more. Is Javante uh, coming back? Oh, hello. Somebody's coming hello. back. Is it on Whisper. the screen? Whisper. Somebody's coming back. Is there an back. email coming out? Hawks got up by one over the Nuggets. No Ja'Cory McLaughlin. Let's leave that to one side because I don't want to talk about whether they would or they wouldn't have if McLaughlin had a play. I want to talk about Ira Lee. A really good uh, showing up, battling down low against Timmons, against Withers, double double. Of course, the biggest shot of the game hit that game winner at Great the end play, of it. Yeah, yep. Really awesome. nice play, and, and his ability to go to either so mm. shoulder really makes him a difficult cover. Especially yeah. he he loves going to that right shoulder, finishing with the left hand. That's tough in the post. Every, everyone like like they shot the ball really well. Jordan Nato is just his even keeled control best. Harm Harris does great. Harm Harris things. We've got him later on in the show. But for mine, it was actually Jordan Hunt along with Ireland. Mm. muscling up on San Timmons, like just absolutely bodying up. And Jordan Hunt, he's not the thickest guy around, but he's strong enough to hold his, uh, hold his own against the size of San Timmons. Respect. Rim runner. 
Rim yeah, runner. rim runner. As good as anybody in the in the competition, you know, for years we've talked about him being the best yep. in transition. You know, the the question is, looking at that Nugget squad, lost two in a row at home. What do they do now? There's some whispers. Ooh, hello. There's some whispers hello. about there an email. What are we? No, no, it's, it's, it's literally whispers. We've literally mentioned whispers. Ty Webster in the past. Yeah. What are you saying, Case? I'm saying nothing. Okay, I'm saying there's some enough. whispers. Saints and the start. Rams. What a thriller this was. Uh, Saints got out by as much as 16, all tied up uh, with a couple of minutes to go. I mean, it was a great game. Athleticism, non-stop. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the Saints basketball right there. It's up and down. Marlon Taylor is a highlight reel. Kyle Adnam uh, is just a maestro. What about the Tallahassee Tomahawk? <laughs> Troy Baxter but Jr. Troy Baxter Jr. Oh. Jr. is the highlight at yep. the moment. Like Marlon Taylor can get up, but Troy Baxter, yeah. he'd be athlete, as you say. I, I think uh, earlier in the season, you, you used to question me on air, who's a more athletic player. I said, oh, it's a kind of a two-way battle. It, it looks like one-way traffic right now. I, I, everybody's chasing Troy Baxter Jr. His, the six block shots he had against Taranaki, the way he's playing defensively mm. and rim running, his ability around the rim, a little, little bit light in the bone marrow, which makes it tough for him to finish at times, but he is always a bone I'll tell you who wanted to join that same athletic party, Isaiah Musius. He is starting to get going for the Saints. Yeah, watch out. Here come the Saints. They are, uh, they're they're going to start marching up that ladder. I think they're going to start um, stretching uh, stretching that floor a little bit as well, like mm. finding that confidence. The unit is now pretty much set. I don't think they, I don't see them bringing anybody in, which is rare for the Saints. We've still got Lee Offer to come in, so the mm. team they're playing with right now isn't exactly who they're going to be. So his ability to run run the, the sets and also play defensively is going to be huge. And I, I like what Taylor and Musius offer them defending especially point guards. We've seen them shut down Jeremy Kendall lately, and, and I think the pressure they put on the perimeter players is immense. Well, as we know, Step Brothers, you've got your pirate ship in the backyard. Let's go down and swim with the Sharks. The Sharks. Shark the Week. <laughs> what was going on down there? Um, you said it in commentary, Casey, about Romaro Gill. Yeah. Without, without, well, did you say it off air and I've thrown you under the bus? Well, either oh, no, either way. Here, but, well, they, they got so used to working with Mario Gill at the back, defending the rim. Yeah, he wasn't super mobile, but the way that they were playing was sort of was that. Uh, Alex Pledger's come in, limited minutes at that, that time. Just on but, that. Just on that. How great to great see him back Great to have yep. Plexi back. Great to see him play well. He didn't shoot 43s like he said he was going to do if he ever <laughs> recovered for cancer. What a liar. <laughs> but what I do like about him without Gil is that they're going to be quicker afoot. They're going to be up and down. But they have to. it's going to take a week or two to get used to it because I, I do think they'll be a more complete team. But it's going to take some shuffling in the meantime. Josh Cunningham comes in as well. So a new look Sharks this week. Jets and Tuatata. I mean, this was a great game of basketball to watch. It was a lot of fun. Ruben Tarangi uh, really just took over. It was Offensive masterclass didn't really need Cam Glidden. Um, he had a quiet game uh, and t- towards the end, but just the Rob Lowe show just controls everything. Yep. I love to Both see ends. him playing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tuatar, I think they need another guy. Who, who's that going to be? They still have place for one more input to come in. So I think there's going to be some improvement there. If it's a big, it's a wing, I don't know. But I was actually really impressed by the Jets. Yes. Bouncing back from a, 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 mm. you know, a, a super, super disappointing performance the week before. Looked like they wanted to be out there together. Yeah. The, the effort levels were up. There was more ball movement. Yeah. There was a better commitment to defense. Mm. And, and they had the Tuatar right there on the ropes. They just couldn't finish it. But very promising for a side. Uh, and a nice contribution from Marcel Jones on the player transfer. Uh, yes, but uh, Mulls, do you know what a boa constrictor is? Uh, it's a giant snake, Justin. I think it lives down at the stockyard because the bulls <laughs> strangle <laughs> the giants. <laughs> did not know where that was going. No, I did not. I was like, oh, what is <laughs> it? It was yeah. a strangulation. I, I mean, I love the bulls roster. And Tyra Harrison is going to come back. And they just have, so, they go, I think they go nine deep now. And then they have Tahui Lewis come off. To Tui Lewis come off Good the bench kid. and, yep. and he, he will shoot it straight away. Yeah. And they've lent on him a little bit in games, um, getting those spot minutes. But Dan Sokolowski, he's tapped into what this team is. Have we figured him out as a coach yet? No, I love that. He's a little bit modi. A yeah, little bit modi more. He, he's a mystery man. I love that. I don't think it's very mysterious. He's got the game plan. He wants them to commit to playing a certain style of defense and he wants them to run good offense. I meant with us, the media. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, no, not with the players. But you <laughs> think, because like with Modi, he, you think you've asked him a hearing question it's only he's taking a beat to decide how quickly he wants to give you the answer <laughs> dismissive yes. answer yeah <laughs> and if it's not dismissive and it won't be with daniel <laughs> yeah. but um it's it's really enjoyable talking basketball with them they're, they're, they're deep and they're tough the thief 
Uh, you know, the way, the way that uh, Ricky McGill has been playing has been fantastic. Right. I, I can't remember off the top of my head if it was five or six steals in that game. All they're going to do is a bad height. But his speed in transition changes what they can be yep. because they, they are mostly a half-court team, but his ability to, to create turnovers and turn those turnovers into points immediately with, with great effect is one of the things that really lifts that level of offense, which right now isn't where it needs to be. Matt Freeman, yeah, good 16, yep. can defend the top of that zone. Yep. Incredible. What a pickup he is. I know they're your team as well, the Bulls. Jared Wilson frame. What a pickup off the street. Yeah, it can shoot it. Uh, lights out. Well, lights out. Went from a team that couldn't shoot, had no shooters, and yeah. now they got shooters everywhere. So it's a, so a, the Hawks. Very different. Very the different Hawks going to shoot it. Yes. Well, yes. They, but the Bulls just brought in personnel that could yeah. shoot, where the Hawks just figured it out. Oh, I, we can shoot every once in a while. Ladder. Here it is. There Let's we go. Look at the ladder after round eight, and again, the, well, the big mover last week. The Hawks were sitting in ninth. This time last week on Sell Two Pids, the Hawks were sitting in ninth. That's all, that's all it takes at this point in the season, and that's why still, even though maybe it's going to be a little tough for those teams from 7 to 10, they're not out of it. Taranaki, I'd probably say it's going to be a tough road for them, but not yeah. impossible. Not impossible not. yet. Certainly looking at what the, the Hawks did last week in two games, the Saints have completely turned around their fortunes. Those other, the, the bottom four teams, though, they got some work to do. Like enormous game, the Saints and the Giants coming up, with just for the standings alone. Like it really is going to be huge. And then the Saints have the, the ears on Sunday as well. Uh, those are the games, if you're a Saints fan, they have to put away. We, we talk about form at home and away. And at the moment, same as last season, more teams are winning away from home than they are at home. But mm. have a listen to this over the uh, the coming rounds for the rest of the season. The Tuatara play six of their last eight at home. The Giants play six of their last eight at home. And the Hawks play five of their last seven at home. Probably not a good thing for the Hawks, given their form at home. Uh, but those three teams heavily weighted at home. On the flip side, Nuggets play six of their last nine away. Mm -hmm. Saints play six of their last nine away. And Rams play five of their last eight away. I think... It comes down to like who the away games are. Like the, the perfect example is the Saints. Teams below them that want that top, that sixth spot where they're currently at at the moment. Those are the games that they'll target and relish winning. Uh, and the ears don't look like they can challenge anybody at the moment, unfortunately, unless they've really pulled their socks up since last round. And Casey, why is it the teams don't value? They value wins no matter whether they're at home and away. But why are we seeing the performances in the dubs away from home? Well, personally, as a player, I always found it a little bit easier to concentrate on things on the road. Uh, you don't have whatever your home life is. That, that you, you, at home, you've got other responsibilities. You got to you got to mow the lawn. You got to pay the bills. You got to wash the dishes. All this stuff. On the road, it's all about wins. You're going to the hotel. Your food meals here. We're going to take a nap and we're going to go play a game. So, I, I think for a lot of players, uh, it is a little bit easier to get that focus and lock things down. And you know, it's fun to be a villain on the road. Go in there, get a dub, two fingers, two fingers in a cloud of dust. Peace. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure whether Casey is ever mowing the lawns, to be honest, mate. <laughs> well, just, just on. on the lid. Just on the lid. All I got, the other lawns get mowed. I got fake lawn. Have you? Yeah, you it's, would. It's really good. Yeah, it that runs so well. Back? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's why you got the Ponson B tractor, eh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> does not surprise me. Yeah, it says a lot about you, Miles. does not surprise me. Hey, NBA, Miami. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a way to go into Boston after dropping three straight games and then looking like you're broken. Like, any other team, I believe, would be broken after losing Game 6 like that at they, home. They booked their flights to Denver before yeah. Game 7. Oh, I love that. Yeah, but to be fair, you have to. That's just the, that's air traffic control. They booked one to Miami as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a private plane. <laughs> but Thanks what, for ruining the story. Guys. What, what I, I love about it is that Eric Spolstra got this team ready to play, and yep. there was never any doubt, despite losing three in a row, that they were going to go up to Boston and get it done. They, they didn't make excuses about what happened at the end with the clock, anything else. They said, this is our job. We've given them their chance. We're going to go up there. They shot 50% from three in the first half to set themselves up so nicely, have that good lead at halftime, and were able to hold down going down the stretch. And just Jimmy Buckets, baby. Oh, great. Mm. I just love Jimmy Buckets. He's just so much fun to watch. Those role players as well feed off that, and, um, that energy that he has, that attitude. It's like he's calm. Like he's, la he's laughing, smiling on the bench in those losses. He knows he's going to get the next one. If he doesn't get the next one, they'll get the next one. If that doesn't, but game seven, they got it. Incredible. And also, I love Boston misery. <laughs> Boston sport fan misery. Oh, it's just so enjoyable. Oh, I revel so in it. enjoyable. 150, 151 to series now where nobody's come back from 3 0. Can I ask the question? Here we go. Can Miami go all the way? No. 
But yes, they can because it's, it doesn't make sense. Somehow they're figuring out, everybody's doubting them to this point. I don't think they're going to win it, but can they? Absolutely, because the will, of the, the indomitableness of their four, of their will is impressive. I would be surprised if the series goes six games. I, I, I think it would be 4-2 Nuggets, but I genuinely believe it could be 4-zip. I just think what they went through against Boston is absolutely draining, and then having to go to Denver and play the first two games there and Jokic and that. They'll probably start slow in the NBA Finals game one because they've had such a long layover, but Jokic is just head and shoulders about, above anything the Celtics were going to throw at them. And has always dominated Miami. I think his uh, career record is like 11-2 and two against the Heat. Well, whichever way it goes, what we do know is the NBA playoffs are going to be spectacular. Can't wait for what is ahead of us. Speaking of ahead of us, the Hawks. They're in a bit of form, thankfully. Finally, they're up and going. Can they keep it going? Our special guest this week on Sells Hoop Eds is the one and only, one of my favorite players, one of your favorite players too, Hiram Harris joins us. G'day, mate. Thanks for uh, dropping by. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, coming off a great weekend. Congratulations on the two wins and hopefully maybe a little bit of momentum for the Hawks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's always good to get two on the road, especially that dirty south trip. Um, but you yeah, got to continue this momentum on uh, in Christchurch. So, what was the difference? You had the Giants put up ninety odd on you the week before the round before. Um, very few people outside of your team and your organization and your true diehard fans. Or, or hang on, Casey's uh, been I, with I, them the I, whole I'm time. I'm still on the bandwagon. I'm still on the bandwagon. No, no, no. But I don't. Did you <laughs> pick the Hawks to beat the Nuggets, case? <laughs> no, no. So what was the mindset change that's got you guys this amazing road swing double? Um, I think it was just a men mentality switch. Like um, we talked about little things that we can control, like just being aggressive, <clears throat> maybe checking someone when they're running down the corner, and letting them get all the way down to their spots, you know, and make it a bit of a battle. Um, and I think we could, we we took that to the Nuggets, and obviously it worked. And then when we got to Southland, we just thought it worked once. Let's try it again, and obviously it, it did us good. Mm. You, you have that mindset, you have that physicality. It's earned you a great opportunity going over to the Perth Wildcats. Uh, you're going on in your Australian career, going up to higher levels. Can you just share with us in your journey how hard you've had to work to go from a guy outside that league to a guy who's coveted around that league, had multiple teams chasing you, and now with one of the flagship programs of the Australian NBL? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, everyone's got their own journey, right? I mean, for me personally, when I went, when I got to Illawarra, it was a little bit of luck. Um, when I was in Invercargill, one of my teammates was Todd Blanchfield, and he got me, well, the coach called him, um, got me there, and then that was my first ever time experiencing it. Um, and then I spent a bit of time out of it, which kind of gave me a bit more motivation just to, you know, put my head down and work a bit harder than I had been in the previous years. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get that Adelaide gig um, two years ago, my first time in Adelaide, and kind of just took that same mentality, got to keep my head down and work, work, work. And I was lucky enough to get opportunities, albeit with um, some of my teammates getting injuries, which is always unfortunate, but it was lucky for me. And then kind of, just when I got the opportunity, I kind of never looked back. You're gonna love playing in front of that Red Army. Like that, that venue looks amazing on the small screen. To live it and feel it and be, have them behind you will be incredible. But I wanna go back to the, the Hawks and you've got the Rams this weekend. How are you going to attack the Rams and what do you see uh, your strengths lie in beating them? Um, obviously the Rams are in good form. You know, they're, I think they're tied for first at the moment between them, the Nuggets and the Tortara. Um, I think we kind of just have to go into that game worrying about us. Obviously we'll have our scouts and information on what they do well and what they don't do well. But I think the biggest thing for us is just to like I said, control what we can control um, and, you know, put a big emphasis on what we do well, uh, which is like obviously being aggressive, um, got a lot of experience in this league, um, so we rely on that. Um, but I think, yeah, going into this game, it would just be what what can we do better as a team and then 
take that to them. Can I just say as well, out of the three of us, I'm the only one who's picked you guys to win. Oh, that game hello. Well. Just brag away. So, um, I just want to make sure what? we get that yeah, out while you're online. Why are you acting like online? I haven't been watching the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why are you acting like I haven't been watching the show? <laughs> hey, amazingly, after the Hawks play the Rams this week, five of their last six games are at home at Pettigrew Green Arena. Now, normally you would say, Geez, that's a great run in to the final six. Can you win a game at home, Hiram? <laughs> Zero and four this season. Can you win at home? We'll win more than one for you. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And before we, before I let you go, Hiram, we've had a little chat about some of the classic hairstyles in the history of the NBL. <laughs> and you are starting to work on a classic hairstyle yourself. We've yes, Hiram. The there braids we go. coming out. Got Here the we go. Yes, coming out. You, You've just committed to it, uh, I guess, from the end of the Adelaide season. But how long are we going to stick with this one, bad boy? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, until my partner doesn't like it anymore. Then when, when she doesn't like it, then it has to come off. So. All right. Good luck with that. Uh, it's <laughs> bye bye tomorrow. <laughs> hey, we appreciate your time. Uh, best of luck against the Rams this week, Hiram, and for the rest of the season. The Hawks, based on what we saw, getting the Southern swing, maybe just starting to heat up at the right time of the season. We wish you well. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Good on you. Hey, Tall Blacks this year, World Cup. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I, I'm taking him. I'm yeah. absolutely taking him, no doubt about it. Can you imagine diving on loose balls around Team yep. USA, Greece, like those games? Um, I, I picked them to beat Greece. I picked them to surprise Greece because it's the last pole game for them and they need, they'll need to win it mm. because the US is so tough. And those are the types of guys you have to have on the Tall Blacks. I mean, it continues the tradition of a Paul Hanati, uh, mm -hmm. a Dylan Boucher, a Mick Vakona. Those guys who are out there doing the little things day after day, leading by example, that is what the Tall Blacks brand is built off of. Absolutely. He's in my 12. Round 9, Sal's NBL action. Here's the games coming up. Giants and Saints, Rams and Hawks. Spoke about that a moment ago. Tortata and the Jets back-to-back -back played each other last week in a great game of basketball. Ayers and Saints, Ayers desperately need to win. Bulls and Jets have the Sunday night game. And then Monday night action, long weekend of course, Sharks and Nuggets. What a rivalry that is. Looking forward to that one on Monday. Mulls, your feature game, Rams and Hawks. Yeah, just because it's must win for the Hawks. They're, they all are, they've got that home stand, but another road game for them. I believe that they're going to beat the Rams at home. I think the Rams uh, just sort of find it themselves again after having Ty Winyard dip out. The, could have an import could have coming an, in yep. this week, the Rams. Exactly. So they're, they're integrating somebody else into that unit. The Hawks are tight. They know what they're doing now. They have that, they have that rotation down pat. And uh, that's my key game because of that. Casey, your feature game, Giants and Saints. Tell us why. Uh, I've, the Saints playing really good basketball. A tough matchup for the Giants, but one they have to circle and they have to rally the troops because if they mm. don't get this win, uh, I think the hole is going to be too big for them to climb out of the rest of the way. Uh, on their home court and, and uh, you know the, the, the rivalry from across the ditch, two teams that really lo enjoy playing against each yeah. other. The Nelson fans are going to be into it. They're going to be pumped for this game, and they have to be because if the Giants don't get this one, I mean, that is a long and windy road that I don't know if they have the tires for. It's a big one because the Saints are in a bit of form at the moment. Yes and no to finish us off with. Here we go. Will the current top six in the Cells NBL be the final top six? Yes or no? A different order. Can move around. The current top six, yes or no? No. Yes. Who comes in, Case? I'm trying to see. I can't think of it right now. Sharks, Giants, Jets. Here yes. we go. This will be interesting. Who comes in? Oh, never mind. Yes. <laughs> should, should the cells NBL introduce... Is, yes, is it yes and oh, no? no, terrible. Is it yes or no, no or yes no, and no? Terrible. A little bit of both. Should, <laughs> stop, stop trying to box me in. Should the cells NBL introduce a sixth man of the year award? Yes. 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 Like because it. there are like some rotations are six players. Yep. Saints fans, are they the best in the cells NBL? 1,000%. Oh, I don't know. Thinking no, about this. I, I'm going to go with the Jets because they've had much less to cheer for over a longer amount I'm of time. Love the Jets so I'm gonna I go. Them. I'm gonna go with the Jets. They're always. So you're saying out. no. I'm saying no. No to the Saints. And that's that's the former. You're saying player. no to the Saints. Look down the camera. You're saying no to the Saints. I'm saying no to the Saints because it's easy to cheer for a winner. Okay, fair enough. If the MVP. What did they win last year? Sorry, Justin. Who games, games, baby, games. games. <laughs> if the MVP was awarded today, would it go? to Rob Lowe. It has to. Yes. It that has to, yes. Surely. Based on, on today, yeah, that's where my vote would go. Will the Nuggets win the NBA championship? Yes. yes. 
Uh, the, the question should be, will whoever it is win the NBA, win a game in the NBA Finals? Uh, you're going with a sweep. LeBron James, does he play next season, yes or no? <laughs> yes. 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 Is it, $50 million contract. Is it with the Lakers, yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, fair enough. And finally, is there any truth in the rumour that the Perth Wildcats are about to set up base in New Zealand? They're taking over. Yeah. Kiwis everywhere with the Wildcats. Uh, as, as often as that Perth Wildcats fan, fan base would yell at the Kiwis when they came over, love whatever team they are, love they have now. certainly changed their tune as of late. <laughs> they will love Hiram. <laughs> Absolutely love him. And on that, special mention, Dante Russo-Nance. The news during the week, how great is that? Yeah, he's got such a high ceiling. This is a great move for him because he's, get, he's getting that next level up that isn't the collegiate level. He's getting real basketball thrown at him and he's got the environment around him and the Red Army yep. to, to develop. Iron sharpens iron. He's going up against Bryce Cotton and the Webster brothers every yeah. day in practice. Uh, Michael Harris is going to be in there. That, that is going to teach him uh, immeasurably more than I think a college program could, could have and, and it's going to develop him really nicely to be a professional athlete. We wish him well. Perth Wildcats looking like a New Zealand team all over. Step Brothers, thank you very much. As always, Sellers Hoop Eds. Hope you've enjoyed it. Get out there and support your teams. This week, round nine, it is getting hot in the kitchen. We'll see you next week.